Welcome. So what I'd like to do is talk to you about the definition of the inverse tangent function. Now, when looking at the tangent function, we say the inverse tangent function, say y equals the inverse tangent of x is true if and only if the tangent of y is equal to x. So therefore, if I was trying to find the tangent, if I say the tangent of y is equal to x, to find the y value of y, we're going to say y is equal to the inverse tangent of x. And we're going to learn how to evaluate for the inverse tangent, um, as well as the other uh, trigonometric functions. But the main important thing that I'd like to do is kind of explain this. You know, This is how we're going to, if we had tangent of y equals x, how we solve for y by finding algebraically is we're going to take this function, the inverse tangent. But there's a couple um, very important attributes of the inverse tangent function, which we need to discuss as far as the domain and the range of the ta inverse tangent function. So to do that, let's go and take a look at our first, our tangent function. Now remember the tangent function uh, is going to look something like this, where it's going to have vertical asymptotes, I guess that will be there, at pi halves and at negative pi halves. And when graphing, when we're talking about uh, graphing the we're talking about graphing the inverse tangent, we know that we need to reflect it about what we call the xy line. So therefore, my graph is now going to be swapped over this xy line. So by taking a look at the change in this graph, one thing we need to do is kind of look at our coordinate points. Well, if my asymptotes on my domain are at negative pi halves and pi halves, they're now going to be my asymptotes of my range. So I'm going to have now asymptotes at negative pi halves and at pi halves. And I didn't go through you know, kind of our coordinate points um, by looking at pi force and at uh, negative pi force. But we know that at negative pi force, or at pi force and negative pi force, we're going to be intersecting over at uh, 1 and at negative 1. But when looking at the graph of the inverse tangent function, by reflecting over this xy line, our graph is going to take somewhat of a shape of looking something like that, where you can see it's approaching each one of our asymptotes. So again, by graphing this, you can see there is going to be, again, restrictions on our domain. And our, no, I'm sorry, there's not going to be restrictions on our domain. There's going to be restrictions on our range. When looking at the original tangent function, y equals tangent of x, you can see that the restrictions on their domain occur at every single one of our asymptotes. And there's no restrictions on our range as our graph goes infinitely in the positive and negative direction and continually repeats. When looking at the inverse function, what we notice is, again, we can't you know, take all of our graphs like this. We can't keep on piling them onto each other because therefore, if we had another graph up here, again, it would fail the vertical line test. So we're only going to be dealing with our initial period of the tangent function. And when looking at this, you can see now our domain of our inverse tangent function is going to be all real numbers. Or it's going to go from negative infinity to infinity, whereas the range is only going to be contained between values of negative pi halves and pi halves. So we can say the range is negative pi halves comma pi halves. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's a quick little definition of the inverse tangent function. Thanks.